Some people complain that in Britain we're so standoffish and or repressed that we can't even talk to each other on public transport. I think that's a wonderful thing. I sit on a full bus or underground carriage of people sitting together in complete silence and my heart swells with pride at a culture sophisticated enough to have evolved a convention that acknowledges that chatting with strangers is almost always an unrewarding chore. What a hell we would make of our lives if, on top of having to go to work every day, get stuff done and hold down a job, we also had to worry about making conversation on the way there and back. If our exhaustedness during a Monday journey in or a Thursday journey home were compounded by having to conceal it and ask chirpy questions of an elderly sales executive about her extension. If only we could expand this enlightened attitude to social occasions. Why, at parties or dinners, are you never allowed to sit with your friends? These are the people I know I like. I've invested time and energy into finding people whose company I enjoy and who are able to tolerate mine. Why would I want to gamble on the chance that some perfect stranger also fits into the category when I have a sure bet sitting three inaudible places away from me? But dinner parties in particular seem to be designed entirely around the thought which people who haven't met each other can we make meet each other? So people who already have friends are set up on awkward dinner-length mini friendship dates with potential new friends. Why do we do that? It's not as if we set up people who are already married on dates with potential new spouses, even though I bet that would be a hell of a lot more popular. Obviously sometimes, especially at weddings or similar, there are the massive bores who no one wants to sit next to, but somebody must. I realise that has to happen. Now and again, you have to throw yourself on the bomb that is Uncle Walter talking about his varicose veins. And I also admit that now and again you spend a pleasant half an hour talking to someone new and interesting. Once in a blue moon, it may even lead to a genuine new friendship. But this benefit surely doesn't outweigh the cost of all the times it doesn't work. I'd happily forego the rare occasions when it works out in order to prevent the tragedy, and it is a tragedy, of two blameless, polite people who don't have much in common, forced to spend the duration of the meal pointlessly trying to ignore that fact and boring each other senseless, all because society dictates we can neither sit with the people we like nor just bin out on this and get books out.